Leica has these intentionally long upgrade cycles between cameras where they're built to be used for many, many years and used with confidence. So when a new one gets announced, it's a pretty big deal, at least in the photography space. This is the Leica Q3, a camera that many have been anticipating for quite some time. It also changes what a Q means in the Leica lineup. This camera, I've been using it for a few weeks and it genuinely has me excited, but it has also left me with a bunch of questions. But before we get into that, let's first look at what this camera can do. Let's start with what's on the inside of this camera and then work our way out. Brand new to the Q3 is a 60 megapixel backside illuminated sensor and it's just oodles, oodles of resolution for what's ostensibly a point and shoot camera. Now this isn't the same sensor as what's found in the Leica M11 where this has a smidge less dynamic range, but it does have that triple resolution functionality where you can go between 60, 36 and 18 megapixels and get incre incrementally and get incrementally more light gathering ability as you go down in resolution. But that's not all kids, the Q3 actually introduces the fourth generation Maestro processor. Yes, this Q3 has the latest processor from Leica on the market right now. And look, I'm not gonna go into a full lecture about image processing, but indulge me for a second. What this means for users is that when you are in the field, this increases the bandwidth for how much and how fast you can create, and especially when it comes to video. I'll get to the image and video quality soon, but let's go back to this sensor real quick. This now has contrast and phase detect autofocus. And if you don't know what any of that means, God bless you because you live a free and impassioned life but for those of you that are curious this is now the first Leica with phase detect autofocus and it is incredibly quick you have eye face body and animal detection and it works really really well in the field you're gonna notice a huge difference in accuracy and speed when you look at a Q3 versus a Q2 and even compared to the SL2 and SL2S I made sure to test this out in different lighting situations and different kinds of subjects and even in low light environments, low contrast environments, this was locking into subjects with intention and that's what you really want to see from a modern camera nowadays. Something I want to explore in the full review is how the phase and contrast detect work together because that is kind of unique to this camera. But all in all, something you're gonna appreciate with the Q3 is the autofocus has gotten significantly better and much more accurate. Along with a boost to the connection speeds, you know, when you're pairing this to your mobile device through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, there's also an improvement to the ISO range where natively it goes between 100 and 100,000. You know, all of this could have been enough. This, just the stuff I've mentioned so far, could have been enough for a successor to the Leica Q2. But there's more. We now have on this camera a three inch tilting display and it goes up and down. And when you look at it, it's not gonna go full 180 degrees. And when you tilt it the other way around, you're looking at about 45 degrees. But the fact that you have this, look, if you're an operator, if you're a photographer, this is a big deal. This is something that you're going to appreciate. And I can hear it now. There are going to be some people complaining that this is a departure from Leica. This is not what Leica should be doing. Look, if you are someone that is avidly taking, avidly taking, if you are enthusiastically, if you are passionately, if you love taking photographs, okay, this makes the photography experience that much better. It makes it easier. And the fact that this only tilts up and down and not to the side. It means that when you are doing low angle or high angle photography, you can be center with the camera, with the sensor. You're not looking off to the left. It makes it easier to use. And there may even be another subset of people that would have loved for this to be a true flippy screen where it turns all the way around. Let me just say, you're wrong. But we'll save that for another conversation. Another upgrade to this camera is that the 5.76 million dot OLED viewfinder can refresh at 120 frames per second and it just makes for a smoother photography experience when you are out and using that electronic viewfinder. And I've talked about this before but when you have a really good viewfinder like this with a ton of resolution and a really high refresh rate it kind of gives you this hyper reality 
feeling, right? When you're looking through it, it looks like this super detailed window into the world. And it kind of brings you closer to your photograph in an interesting way. Of course, the camera has an IP52 weather sealing rating, which means that you can shoot in all kinds of weather conditions with confidence. But what if you could shoot longer? Well, you can with this camera. You see, even though they kept the same battery size, they increased the capacity of this battery from 1800 to 2200. And this thing right here, well, you're looking at a little over 20% more battery. It might not sound like much, but when you're in the field, well, let me just say this. When I was in the field, it was the difference between, you know, babysitting the battery and giving it a little bit of juice and getting home with, you know, five or 10% left. That extra battery life, it does make a considerable difference on a camera like this. On the Q3, you now also have a USB-C and micro HDMI port. So whether you want to monitor your footage in video, whether you want to charge it with a power bank, whether you want to use this as a webcam or use this for tethered photography, you can do all of that and more. There's also the ability for wireless charging. You need to get the Leica Q3 grip for this. A lot of people do get the grip for the Q just to make it more comfortable. But that new grip, when it attaches to the bottom, you can place this on any compatible Qi charger and it will wirelessly charge your camera. I had to do a double take. You know, when I'm listening to this and I'm, I'm looking through the presentation, all this kind of stuff, I had to do a double take because a lot of these upgrades it doesn't seem like Leica things and not in a bad way. It's just a type of innovation and inclusion and accessibility that you think that other companies would be doing. But Leica lately, they've been doing a lot of these changes on their major cameras to make them more usable and in more places, which is awesome. And we haven't even talked about the 8,000 pixel elephant in the room. This camera can record in 8K. Why do you need 8K? That, that is too much power in the hands of Q users. Okay, let's reel it back a little bit. Look, most people don't need 8K, but the value of 8K is that you can capture footage, not have to flip it vertical, right? You can stay in your standard format and crop in and, and change the composition. And well, really there's a ton of things you can do with it. You're not gonna use it all the time, but there are places where using 8K can be valuable, especially if you want to just capture some video and then pull a still later. Anyway, I won't go down the 8K rabbit hole. The camera can do 8K and it looks really good. The only thing that really stayed the same on this camera is the lens. It's the same 28 millimeter f1.7 lens and it has more than enough resolving power for that 60 megapixel sensor. And let me just say, the results look great. Now, the sponsor of this video actually played a huge part in me being able to test this camera further. Capture One Pro has a ton of new updates that were released over the last few months, including some new tricks with AI. I got access to a preview version that had support for the Q3, so I could actually test the files. It also had support for tethering on this camera. And look, uh, quite simply, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I love to just start my editing in Capture One Pro. I was able to create a brand new session, import these images, play around with them, call them, and really apply my look to them in time for this video. And in that time, I found that the images from the Q3 are very reminiscent of the Leica SL2, where there is a ton amount of information that you can pull from the shadows while keeping the noise in control. And the saturation, it feels just about right. You might add a little bit more for taste, but I'd rather have that than a file that is too saturated or too pushed to one, you know, either magenta or greenish tones. What's also fascinating, and it shouldn't be fascinating because it's just physics, but the extra resolution means that those digital crops where you, you know, on the camera, you can choose between 35, 50 and punch in on the image, the digital crops have more utility with them because as you crop in, you still have quite a bit of resolution. So when I'm in Capture One and punching in and reframing these images, it meant that the images had a bit more detail and clarity to them. And look, we often are spoiled with resolution, but as a photographer, as a user, just seeing these results up close, even though your audience might not appreciate them, 
it does have that positive feedback loop. It gets you excited to keep shooting. Whether or not you have the Q3 on your wish list, I'd still recommend if you are an enthusiast photographer or pro photographer, give Capture One Pro a test drive. There's a link in the description for a free trial. So go ahead, sign up, try it out for yourself. And at the time of recording, I should also say, if you signed up for a free trial and you're a part of my photo club, I'm running a contest where one person is going to win a full copy of Capture One Pro 23 and my global styles pack. So look out for that as well. Let's also talk about the lens for a second. While this isn't the exact same lens I'd find on a 28 Zoom Lux for the M mount, it still has an incredible amount of quality and resolving power to it. You can shoot this thing wide open and get fantastic results where, you know, it controls flare really well and you don't have these weird aberrations that are showing up in all your photographs. You also have a macro mode on this camera where it's on the collar of the lens. You can just engage that and focus as close as 17 centimeters. And what this means is that well, you just open up the storytelling ability, especially if you're traveling, that you can capture a wide range of shots or just creep people out. While this camera is a fixed lens camera, you still have a digital crop that you can, you know, with a press of a button, go from 28 to 35 to 50 to 75 and now 90 millimeters. And it is a digital crop, so it's changing the composition, right? You're punching in on the image, not really changing the look of the lens. But if you use it effectively, it's a great way to get a range of images in the moment. The Leica Q3 also has a leaf shutter, which is not a Pokemon move. This thing allows you to have a quieter shutter in the field, but more importantly, allows you to increase your flash sync to the max mechanical speed, meaning that you can go to a 2000th of a second and still use the power of your flash. And this is just something that is incredibly useful if you're really trying to freeze the moment. Now let's go back to video and talk about what it can do. If you are shooting 8K, you can go as high as 30p, 420, which is still a ton of resolution and a good amount of color information. If you want a bit more depth, you can go to cinema 4K up to 60p in 422. I found myself often using the Cinema 4K 24P and shooting my footage that way. And if you look at it, this oversampled 4K is incredibly crispy and maybe even too crispy. You might wanna get a 49 millimeter diffusion filter just to cut back the sharpness a little bit if you are taking video of people more often than not. There isn't a cine mode in this camera like there is in the Leica SL2S. So you don't have all the cinema options as you would have in a pro camera, but there's still quite a bit here. You can still take advantage of all the new autofocus modes, eye, face, body, and animal detection in video, which is incredibly useful. And in my early tests, there doesn't seem to be a recording limit. At least I haven't hit a recording limit. It just seems to be based on your card size. There's no raw recording from this camera, but you can use L-Log and load your custom LUTs. And if you've seen my previous video where I dive really deep on L-Log and LUTs and color management, you know this is something that is incredible for a camera like this. It means that you can go and find a LUT that you would use in your editing, at least as a starting point, load it into this camera and get a better preview so you can get a better exposure when you are out and practicing your video. Now look, that's already a lot and believe me, I could talk more at length about some of these upgrades and features and the nuance and what it means for photographers, but I think I'll save that for the full review. What I wanna talk about next are the things that I've been enjoying the most on the Leica Q3. The design of this camera, both the hardware and the software, make for something that's just effortless and fun to use. I don't have to think as much when I'm using a Leica Q3, but I still get the benefits of Leica optics and Leica image processing. I could single-handedly use this camera at f1.7 and capture an in-focus shot of a wild seven-year-old, and it's just a great thing to have. Now, this might not be as important for everyone watching, but for Q users, this is a big deal. 
I also like how the buttons have been shifted all to the right of the camera. There is now a function button that's moved to the top. And you'd think that using this, you're gonna accidentally engage some of these buttons. I've tried to, there seems to be just enough of a gap where that doesn't happen, where you don't have these accidental presses. Again, I like it. It makes for something that's more comfortable to use single-handedly. You can operate this a lot easier. Oh, and another thing that's changed on the camera is the shutter button, which it now matches the M camera. So, you know, this is gonna be mostly an aesthetic thing, but it's something I think people are gonna love, where you can throw your own custom shutter on your Leica Q3. If you're asking me, Leica has the best app integration when it comes to their cameras, right? Where it looks really nice, it works reliably, and the Q3 now gives you up to 10 times faster file transfer speeds. And on top of that, you'll soon have the ability to transfer videos from the camera to your mobile device. And that has me excited. Imagine just being out somewhere, especially somewhere remote, and being able to capture really beautiful videos, maybe a moving portrait, and then transferring it to your phone, applying your look, applying a crop, and then sharing it right away. That's the kind of stuff that has me excited. It's also something that a lot of companies fail to deliver on, so I'm really excited that they've placed a focus here. There's plenty to love about the Leica Q3, but it's a lot of these small things that, that come together and really complete the package. So when you're looking at a camera like this, it's not about what it can do, you know, that ultimately makes you decide whether you want one or not. It's more about what it can't do. The Leica Q3 does not have a built-in flash, and some people might find this laughable, but if you ask me, just having an extra source of light that you can creatively manipulate on your camera, it's something that can prove to be useful in the field, and it means that you have one less piece to carry with you. Also, this camera doesn't have a built-in ND filter, which is fine in most universes, except for the one that we're in, where another very popular camera does have a built-in ND filter. A built-in ND filter means that you could have shot at f1.7 in really bright conditions without the need for an additional piece. But alas, here we are, where if you, you know, want to cut down on some light, you buy a filter. And of course, there's price. When you factor in how this camera is made and all the cutting edge upgrades and features, you know, this is something that's gonna price out a lot of people. At $6,000 US, it's just not something that's gonna be accessible for most people in the photography space. Are any of these really deal breakers? I don't think so. But what I do believe is that, you know, one, two, or three of these things are going to play an important factor in your decision on whether this camera is right for you. But this is still early. I wanna spend more time with this camera. And this is something I wanna answer in the review about ultimately who is gonna benefit most from a camera like this. All in all, I just think that there's so many things to love about this camera that if you are looking to get one or pre-order one, it's really gonna come down to what it can't do for your work. As an M and SL owner, the Leica Q3 really surprised me. You know, it reminded me so much of what I loved about the Fujifilm X100V, where it was effortless and fun to use. You know, I can just wrap this thing around my arm, wield it easily, and just capture more of my day-to-day. -day. Again, the Q series for Leica makes photography effortless and fun, while raising the ceiling for the image quality you could have on the go. And it's that simple idea that keeps Q users coming back time and time again. There was this one moment where my kid was leaping across the beds and landed on the headboard for a split second. I had the camera with me, so I turned around, it was wide open, popped the shot off, and you know, like kids are ruthlessly ineffective at sitting still, especially when a camera is pointed at them. But I managed to get this, well, at least for me, a special shot where it's perfectly in focus and the perspective, it's something that I find really pleasing. And it's in that moment that I start to really appreciate what a Q camera can do for people and especially what a modern Q camera such as the Q3 can do where you can shoot wide open in situations you would have to work a lot harder for with other cameras and get an amazing result in the moment.
I really enjoyed my time with the Leica Q3. It seriously impressed me, but it also left me with even more questions. More specifically, who is this camera most ideal for? How does it compare to the Fujifilm X100V? How does it compare to the Leica M11? How does it hold up under heavy usage across weeks and months? These are all things that I'm actually just excited to look into in the upcoming weeks and months and future videos and ultimately the full review of this camera. Look, if you've made it this far, uh, thank you so much. It truly means a lot to me. I've been doing a lot of these camera videos lately because there's been a lot of camera news. And the reason I continue to do them is because there are a good amount of you that have joined this channel for that journey, to hear what I think about these new products and using them in real world situations and varying conditions. What I will also say if you made it this far is, well, two things. Uh, leave a comment below with, uh, with a, your favorite animal emoji, okay? So use an animal emoji, leave a comment so I know who you are. And then number two, uh, join my photo club, the Church and Street Photo Club, because that's the place where I get to talk more about my photography journey. You know, gear in my real life is just a small part of my journey. So join the Church and Street Photo Club where I share my photography adventures from all over the world. There's a bit of a focus on India and Southeast Asia right now, but we're gonna go all over the place. So yeah, if you made it this far, thank you, number one. And number two, join the photo club if you haven't already. Anyway, that's enough for one video. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.